All right, we need to talk about this auto rifle for two reasons. Number one, it's really, really good. Number two, my man Dingo, who is a Titan main at heart, has been in love with Scathe Lock since year one. But he has been methodically collecting God Rolls now for a couple months. And fellas, we got to talk about this auto as it is truly superior to all other 600s. Now, it's hard for me to say that. At one time, when 600 round per minute auto rifles were literally the best weapons in the game, it's hard for me to sit here in front of you and tell you that Scathe Lock is better than the likes of OG God Roll Gilliard. But I'm here to tell you, fellas, it can hang and then some. Now, first up, being in that adaptive frame archetype, it shoots at 600 rounds per minute. There, of course, has been various nerfs handed out to 600 round per minute auto rifles, but they're still, in my opinion, competitive enough. They actually have a pretty decent time to kill value of 0.8 seconds, requiring eight crits and one body. And 600s kind of like find themselves in between 720s and 450s, quite literally, but also in its capabilities. It has the dueling capabilities of 720s, but the range of 450s, or at least attempts to have the range of 450s. Now, time to kill wise, rapid fires actually beat out adaptives now at 0.77 seconds, and precision rifles are actually right there tied with the same time to kill value of 0.8 seconds, matching that of adaptives. So why should you use Scathe Lock, a kinetic auto rifle that shoots 600 rounds per minute? Well, first up, just take a look at these random rolls. Man, this is not bad at all. You've got combinations like surplus and multi kill clip, heating up, rampage, tunnel vision, multi kill clip. For PVE, you've got subsistence and rampage, subsistence and adrenaline junkie for when adrenaline junkie finally gets that buff. And then even other dueling combinations like eye of the storm, which by the way, we actually have a roll off. But the main thing that I really wanted to narrow down before we get into the best rolls of this weapon is its zoom. This weapon has a default zoom of 20. Now I bring this up because at one time we all stated that Gilliard was the best 600 round per minute auto rifle in the game, especially once Hardline actually got a nerf, primarily because Gilliard came with scopes. These scopes had zoom modifiers that increased the range of the weapon. Now, like most 600 round per minute autos, they all had a base default zoom of 16. Even when you take into consideration auto rifles like Hardline, that weapon also has a zoom of 16. But where Gilliard really shined was the ability to equip it with scopes like the SRO 37 Ocular or the SPO Front. And if you really wanted to heat things up, you can actually put on the SRO 52 ocular, which actually bumped that zoom up by plus six, as well as a hefty bump there in its range. And of course, the combinations of that, ricochet rounds, dynamic sway, range finder, fellas, are you aroused yet? Yeah, yeah, even today, I still get aroused. I can't help myself. This is a nasty gun roll, and only a few select people in the world actually got this weapon with that specific roll. But of course, Gilead has been sunset, so it doesn't even matter. Now, even though you could get the crazy, crazy scopes like the SRO 52 that really bumped up that range and zoom, it was never really recommended by us. The zoom was just a little too much, and on top of that, I found other scopes to just be better options. There is a point, guys, where the zoom is just so much that you can't really keep up with what's happening in front of you. And when you start stacking on things like rangefinder with these zoom boosting scopes, things can get a little too magnifying. Mag magnifying. Too much magnify. And as you can imagine, if you're that zoomed in, it's kind of hard to track your enemy as every time they move, it looks like visually because of your zoom that they're moving way more. Whereas it's much easier to track with a scope that kind of just sits right down the middle, such as either the SPO 57, the 26, the 28, so on and so forth. Not necessarily the most committed scope to that range and zoom, but committed enough, enough to be a noticeable difference in improvement. And that would actually result in Gilliard having around a plus 20 zoom with any of those scope options. Where Scathe Lock actually separates itself is the fact that the weapon already comes with plus 20 zoom all by itself. This means this weapon by default has better range than the vast majority of other 600 round per minute auto rifles and just other auto rifles in general, even 450s. 450s also have plus 16 zoom outside of maybe the number. But doing a side-by-side -side comparison to the Soros verse, you can see the huge range difference. Soros, despite having really good range on this particular roll, could only reach up to 31, maybe 32 meters, whereas Scathe Lock here can reach all the way up to 38 meters. You can see where this starts to get really, really nasty. 38 meters at full damage is something to not overlook, especially with the 600 round per minute auto rifle. And if you got the right roll, such as the ones you see here in front of you, you start to shred through a number of enemies. Now, 
I do want to take you through a couple of roles that I had, as well as Dingo's roles. One of my favorite roles is actually this one right here. It was a multi kill clip surplus roll, steady rounds with full bore. Now, a little counterintuitive there. Full bore actually cut down my stability, buffed my range. Steady rounds kind of cut down my range and buffed my stability. But sometimes I would actually swap between that and extended barrel, increasing my recoil direction. That in combination with the counterbalance mod, which I do recommend here on Scathelock, actually brought our number up to a nice odd number, such as 85 or 75. This is enough to make the weapon vertical, but not, of course, as vertical as it could be had you rock something like Arrowhead Break with a counterbalance mod. Again, some weapons, you can get away without having perfect vertical recoil. Auto rifles, though, you start to feel it a little more, especially if the gunfight goes past that first half of your magazine. You start to see deviation, and unless you're rocking a class like Top Tree Dawn Blade where you're taking to the air, for the most part, if your butt is on the ground, you need to be rocking a counterbalance mod. Now, some of the other roles that we got to play with, Dingo actually had a similar role to mine with multi kill clip, but he also had some other ones that I was really interested in, such as this heating up rampage roll. Now, again, heating up allows for those final blows to increase weapon accuracy and stability while improving that vertical recoil. You can imagine how beneficial this is on an auto rifle. That in combination with the sizable magazine size here, as well as a trait like rampage, fellas, you are constantly ramping your damage and accuracy with every single kill. And if you combine this with a rampage spec mod, which I know we just talked about counterbalance being a necessary thing, but if you can actually tame this weapon enough to get a single kill, I can promise you the vertical direction that heating up grants you upon just getting one kill is nasty enough and it only gets better and better with each stack and better and better with each stack of rampage. The downside of things like rampage and even multi kill clip inside of PvP as well, you just don't get that huge beefy bump there in damage, especially things like rampage, right? Rampage at one stack starts off at 10%, two stacks 21%, and three stacks up to 33%. And it's about three and a half seconds there that you actually get to hold that buff in four and a half seconds with a rampage spec mod. Kill clip, on the other hand, only requires a single kill and will grant you 33% damage. However, you cannot chain kill clip kills back to back. If you reload too quickly, you can actually misproc the perk and mess yourself up. That's kind of where multi kill clip comes in, as you can just chain kills back to back. And with every single kill, you can get multiple stacks of multi kill clip starting off at 17%, 33%, and then maxing out at 50%. And there is no downtime in between proc and that perk. Now, damage wise with multi kill clip, I like to just kind of go off of just one stack because realistically, fellas, you're not going to get two or even three stacks of multi kill clip inside of PvP. There are times that you can, but for the most part, expect only one stack, which actually bumps our damage up from 23 per crit to 26 per crit. Now, the damage numbers are kind of funky here because I know it's showing 24, but just basing it off of Mercalisa's charts, it's actually 23 per crit. And that increase in damage by 17% is like 26.91. So technically almost 27. Again, the rounding inside of Destiny is funky. Regardless, a single stack there of multi kill clip is enough to drop that time to kill value from that 0.8 second TTK to 0.7. So it does make a difference. Whereas Rampage, despite it showing 26 per crit, is actually like 25 per crit. Now, is that that big of a deal? Not really. Again, similar scenario here. It also drops the time to kill down from 0.8 to 0.7. I bring both of these up because those are the main damage perks you're going to be choosing between. And so when choosing between whether or not you should do multi kill clip or rampage, in my opinion, there's really not one that's more superior than the other. Instead, it just comes down to the trait that you're combining with it. You got surplus. All right. Well, you probably want to combine it with multi kill clip. Do you have tunnel vision? That's a great combination with multi kill clip as you'll be able to proc both of those at the exact same time without any awkward downtime in between both of those perks. And if you have something like heating up, well, Rampage is definitely the way to go. And for my PvE players, hands down, Subsistence and Rampage together. So you really can't go wrong here, guys, on whatever role you choose. It just comes down to the right combination. And that to me is what makes a very well-rounded weapon, where there's just a lot of different combos that allows for multiple god rolls within a single weapon. Now, a quirky role that we did get to play with on Dingo's account included this Eye of the Storm surplus role. So again, surplus giving us that increase in stability and handling as well as reload as long as we have charged abilities in combination with I am the storm which allowed for our weapon to become more accurate as well as bumps there in handling when your health got lower there were times there in dueling scenarios where I started to lose that I the storm would kick in and I would actually win those gunfights it wasn't that many but enough for me to go hey that's not bad again a dueling perk and maybe in scenarios like 6v6 I am the storm isn't the way to go because you're just trying to chew through a number of enemies but in something like trials where things are a little slower pace and especially in 1v1 
ones, this Eye of the Storm role will serve you well. No, you won't get the crazy multi kills, but Eye of the Storm, Surplus, really a nasty combination to duel against enemies. And you'll be amazed how often it will actually clutch up for you. So, guys, overall, Scathe Lock is a fantastic weapon. I find that inside of PvE, you really can't go wrong with any of the combinations that we mentioned. As far as I know, I know we're getting a buff there to Adrenaline Junkie this December. Now, I don't know exactly what they're changing about it, but depending on that buff, that may actually be the play here and maybe do like a subsistence adrenaline junkie combo. What I was actually enjoying was doing subsistence rampage with Actium War Rig, and man, we never had to reload. And with this weapon being a kinetic weapon, yeah, it's doing increased damage inside of PvE. So lots of benefits here, guys. Scathe Lock from its base default stats to having significantly more zoom. And it's funny because Bungie purposely did this. It's year one variant, only had 16 zoom. So Bungie went out of their way to increase the zoom here on Scathe Lock. And that makes a big difference here when it comes to maintaining full damage at those great ranges. The only issue I have with Scathe Lock is that the tracking seemed a little funky due to that zoom. More so than just like 20 zoom. And I need to do a side-by-side -side comparison here to see if this is actually 20 zoom. Because even though it says 20 right there on the stat sheet, part of me was thinking it was more than that. But not necessarily reflected in its range, but instead only visually. Maybe my eyes just deceive me. And it is in fact 20 zoom. Regardless, it's a sizable bump there in range, guys. You'll be outranging many other weapons. Scathe Lock has a number of roles that can turn this weapon into a god roll for you, and it's definitely a weapon to lock down this season. So good luck with the grind. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.